Hello, welcome to the deep learning course. In this course, we are going to talk about the deep learning concepts and algorithms, and we are also going to implement them in PyTorch. In the first video, we will go over the basics of the tensors in PyTorch. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's start by defining a tensor. For doing that, the first thing that we are going to do is to import torch, and then I'm going to use torch.tensor, and we are going to assign that to tensor1. So tensor one now is defined. And just like Python list, so we can access different elements. For example, I can access the element three, zero, one, two, three. So I should get the element four. So tensor four is the result. And you can see at the beginning of that, it writes tensor because that is a PyTorch tensor. It's not just a number. And we can also see the type of data that is stored in the tensor by using dot d type if we do that we see that is the type of the data is integer 64 we can also see the type of the tensor itself by using the function type if we do that we see that is a line tensor the complete list of data types you can find them at this address now let's look at a floating tensor for example tensor 2 equals torch dot tensors but this time if i just make one of the elements uh, as a floating points just like python is going to consider all of the elements floating points so you can see if i want to try to access the index 3 which is element 4 it's going to be a floating number i can access for example the other element and that's a 3 now is a floating number so we can see that data type that is stored in our tensor and that is float 32 we can also see the type of the tensor and that is torch float tensor. We can also specify the type of the data that we are putting inside the tensor. For example, here tensor three, we define that like pass, and it's if we don't do anything else, it's gonna be a floating tensor, but we can here explicitly say that I want that be integer 32. And if we do that and print, for example, one of the elements, we see that is saying it is a tensor four, and here inside the parentheses tells you that it is integer 32 because we defined that here and we said that that must be integer 32. So any other elements is also same thing. So for example, I can look at number two. Again, that is integer 32. And all of the data is stored inside the tensor. All of them are integer 32. And we can see the type of the tensor. Now it's integer tensor. Okay. We can also explicitly create a tensor with a specific type. For example, tensor four, we can say in definition, instead of just torch.tensor, now I can say torch.float tensor. Although I am putting all of the integer here, that's going to consider them as floating. For example, I can say tensor four. Now let's print one of the elements. You see this dot comes here. It's meaning that that's a floating point. So I can do it again. Data type is float32. And type of the tensor, as we expected now, is float tensor. Because we define here uh, explicitly that the type of the tensor we want is a floating tensor. OK. We can also change the type of a tensor. For example, I have this tensor here, tensor5. That's a line tensor. And I want to change that and say, inside that, the argument we are going to pass is torch.float tensor. It knows that now it should change the type of that tensor to a floating tensor. Okay. We can also see the size of a tensor. For example, here I have a tensor that has two rows and three columns. So when we can look at the size, two rows, three columns. And we can see the number of dimensions also. For example, here for tensor six, we have two dimensions. Also, we can use the function dot view to change the dimension of a tensor. For example, I have a tensor 7 here that has 10 elements. And if you look at the size of that, we have 10 elements in it and we only have one dimension here. So dimension is one, but I want to have a two dimensional 10 rows, one column. We are going to use a dot view and inside the parentheses, the first element is going number of rows and the second number of columns. So I want 10 rows, one column. And if we do that and see the size, 
you can see size now is 10 1. Now it's a two dimensional matrix. It has 10 rows and one column. And if you look at the dimensions, we can see that is two. Inside the function view, we can also use uh, minus one. And minus one, what it's going to do is that it's going to infer dimension based on the other specified uh, dimensions. Here we said that we want uh, one column. So it's going to go and say, okay, I have 10 elements and only one column. So it means that I need to have 10 rows. So it's going to figure it out the number of rows by itself. So it's going to be, if you do that, again, same results. And dimensions are two. We can also convert NumPy and PyTorch to each other. For example, let me first import NumPy here. And I have a NumPy array here defined. And let me convert that to a torch and so for doing that we use torch dot from numpy say torch dot from numpy and we pass the numpy array if we do that so in past it was a numpy array now it's a torch tensor and we are converted back using dot numpy for example here I have a tensor 10 which was a torch tensor using the function dot numpy we can convert it back so if I do that, the class that we get back as for the NumPy array 2 is a NumPy array. So we could move that back to NumPy array. We can also convert Panda series to torch tensors. For example, here I can first import uh, pandas as PD and we define the series and we can see the type here and we can convert it to a torch tensor using the torch dot from NumPy. But here, we just need to remember that we need to use the dot values. So when I put the series here, I have to use also dot values. Okay. So if we do that, we can convert it easily to torch dot tensor. We can also convert tensors to Python list. So I have a tensor 11 here and using the function to list, I can convert it to a normal Python list. So now from a torch tensor, now I converted that to a list. And you can see here, in front of that, we don't see that tensor we used to see. Because here it was a torch tensor type, here it is just a normal Python list. Also, sometimes we need to access to elements of a tensor and use that as a normal um, member of a Python. So for example, here I have tensor 12. And if you look at the element type of the element, you can see that it's a tensor. So element of a tensor is a still a tensor. And if you print that, you can see the tensor in front of that. So for converting that to a normal number that you use in Python, you just have to use the dot item function. So now I have that torch element. I use dot item and I get a Python number. And if you print that, you can see the type is integer and you can print the number as one. Indexing and slicing is also similar to Python. So for example, I have a tensor 13 here. We define that and I can access, for example, to the elements 2 to the n. So 0, 1, 2. That means 3, 2, 5. If I do that, I get 3, 4, 5. We can also substitute them. So for example, I want to change index 1, 2, 3. So I could say tensor 13, 1 to 4. We put 4 because the last one is not included. And then we define a new tensor. If we do that, we see that, okay, now it's starting from index one, two change to 20, three change to 30, four change to 40, and five didn't change. Okay, let's look at some basic operations. The first one is adding two tensors together. For example, I have V1 and V2, two tensors. We can add them together. And when we add them, that's gonna be a point wise add. So the first element from the first tensor is going to be added to the first element of the second tensor and so on. We can also subtract that is similar. So again, first element to first element, second element to second element. Also, we can add by a scalar. For example, here uh, I can add the tensor V1 by 10. It means that all of the elements are going to be added by 10. Also, we can multiply by a scalar and that's similar. We're just going to multiply all of the elements with that scalar. Here I'm multiplying elements with the scalar 5. We can also multiply two tensors together 
And if we do that, that's going to be a pointwise multiplication. So this means that, again, first element to first element, second element to second element. We can also do dot product between two vectors. And the function we are going to use for that is porch dot dot. If we do that, we get the results. So we can also have some very universal functions like dot mean, dot standard deviation, maximum or minimum. So for example, here I have a tensor like this and I can calculate its mean or its standard deviation or maximum or minimum. So let's do that. If we do that, you see the mean is zero because it's just symmetric and standard deviation is 1.58 and we have max as positive 2 and minimum as negative 2. We can also plot a tensor. For example, here I'm defining a tensor between 0 and 4 pi. I want 50 elements in my tensor equally divided. We can use the function uh, lin space. And if we do that, we get this tensor. Then I'm going to define another tensor, tensor y. And that's going to be a function of x we could for example use the cosine function here and if we do that it's going to calculate that for each specific elements for example for the first element what's the cosine of zero that's going to be one you can see this as one here and so on now let's plot that first we need to import the library to plot the important point for plotting is just to remember that we need to convert them back to numpy and if we do that we can plot the function now let's look at the multidimensional tensors. For example, here I have a 2D tensor. It has three rows and four columns. So dimension is two and size is three rows, four columns. And we have 12 elements in it. Um, what I'm gonna do with this tensor, let me show it again here. I can access the elements of this uh, tensors easily. I can, for example, get the access to the uh, index 2 of row, so for example, it's going to be 0, 1, 2, and index 2 of the column, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2. So if I do that, I should get the element 12. You can also do that with a separate brackets if you want to get the one specific element. If you use separate brackets, uh, it could be a mistake that we might think, okay, if I get between 0 and 2 rows and 0, 2, and columns, I'm going to get uh, 1, 5, uh, 2, 6, and, but we don't get that. This is a mistake. So what we need to do when we want to get a range of the elements, uh, we must have to use one bracket and come up between them. If we do that, we get the correct answer. So just make sure for one element, it's okay if you use separate brackets in the slope comma. But when you are going to slice them in two different directions, make sure that you are using a comma. Okay, um, the next thing that we are going to talk about is matrix multiplication, which is just using the function dot mm. For matrix multiplication, as you know, we need to have a match between the number of columns of the first matrix and number of the rows of the second matrix. For example, here I have three columns on the first matrix and three rows on the second matrix. So it's possible to multiply these two matrices to each other. If we do that, we get the result. Now let's talk about derivatives. So for example, here I have a tensor that I'm defining, but when I'm defining this tensor, what I'm gonna do is to put this requires graphs as true. When we do that, it's like having X as a symbolic variable here. So if you print that, it's going to tell you three and requires graph. It means that you can get derivative with respect to three. Now let's say, for example, I have a function like this, y equals x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus 1. So let's calculate y here and print that. We get the value 37 and you can see this information is telling you that it is possible to get the derivative of y with respect to a variable that y is defined based on. Here is x. So if I get the derivative of y with respect to x in a mass, so we are going to get 3x to the power of 2 plus 2x. So for conducting this derivative, so the function for doing that is called dot akvar. If you do that, derivative is done. And you might want to see the value of that derivative at the point that you are interested. For example, 
we can see derivative of y with respect to x at the point x equals 3. So if you just substitute the variables, you get the value 33. The function for doing that is just called dot graph. If we do that, we get the tensor 33. Okay, now let's do partial derivatives. Imagine that I have a function f has two variables, u and v. And it's defined as u times v, u to the power of 2, and 3 times v to the power of 3 plus 1. So let's define them. So I have first tensor. Again, we put this true because we are going to get derivative of that. So it's kind of a symbolic variable here. And we also have v. Again, that is true. And I have a function. You can calculate that and get a value at u2 and u, uh, v3. And you can see it's still here. That means that we can get derivative of this function f with respect to the variables that they defined f. So now it's going to be a partial derivative because we are going to take the derivative with respect to u and with respect to v. With respect to u, v is considered as a constant. So the first one is going to be uh, uv, derivative with respect to u, when v is constant, is v. For this one is 2u. For this one is 0 because v is just constant and for 1 is 0. So it's going to be v plus 2u. Again, for the second one with respect to v, so it's going to be u, 0, 9v to the power of 2, 0. Okay? Now, for doing these two derivatives, again, use the function backward. We say f dot backward. If you do that, it's going to do both of them at the same time. And if you want to get the value of uh, derivative with respect to u, we use the function u dot grad and the result is 7. Again, for getting the value of the derivative with respect to u, we use u here dot grad. Similar for the v, if I want to get the value with respect to v and see the value, we say v dot grad and we see the result. Okay, this was the last point for this session. And thank you so much again for watching this video.